Toffee was defeated. Magic was restored. Ludo embarked on a journey to find himself. Eclipse approved her moral code after attempting to murder her own flesh and blood to protect the kingdom. Labagor? He wants peace and unity just as much as Star and Eclipsa. So, game over? Things may not be ideal, but hey, there's no more overpowered beings out there for the Burfi family to fight. Well, I wish I could tell you that was the case. But it couldn't be further more from the truth. Something is very wrong. Star's greatest threat, the mastermind pulling the strings, the one that would make even Toffee fall to his knees, is still out there, with the power to eradicate the human race with sheer strength and willpower alone. And the cherry on top? He's coming. Welcome back to Mooney Mayhem on the Roundtable. I'm Ostrich Vox, and we need to have a serious talk. I know, in anticipation for Star vs. the Forces of Evil's fourth season, which is still a while away, I've been pretty adamant that Toffee will return as the Zeptarian our heroes will have to face off in a final confrontation. Yeah, he's the true villain. Aside from Ludo's shenanigans, everything began with Toffee. Every major event in Season 2 was nothing more than a box for Toffee to check off, and everything in Season 3 was kickstarted by his defeat. And considering there's a lot more to learn with Toffee, the Book of Spells gives us some information, but not a whole bunch. And even if you're sold that Toffee is dead, with no hope of coming back by the end of his self-titled episode, the Book of Spells introduces a resurrection spell. So there's a way for him to come back. But I think Toffee's return will be a part of a much bigger thing. A much bigger villain. Well, I still believe Toffee is the end game, at least for Star herself. After all, the Book of Spells revealed they're both royalty, more in particular, both a princess and a prince. I feel as if we still need a strong new threat. And we have one. Toffee seemed to have a very particular plan in the series, one that was immediately put to a halt as soon as Star used her magic to defeat him. But what was his plan? Who was all involved? Well, the Book of Spells begins to put those pieces together. Throughout the chapters of the book, we get bits and pieces of information revolving around a Septarian named Seth who, in appearance, is definitely the most reptile of all the Zetarians we've seen. Which I believe was obviously done for a purpose. When we look at all the monsters of Star, they still have human aspects to them. Even the Zetarians. In fact, Rastacor, the Zetarian who was previously the closest to a reptile, has a lot more of a human appearance than Seth. And although it's just a headshot, it still sends me chills. I believe Seth is illustrated like this to allude to his lack of humanity. Or humanity, is that what it would be called in this universe? You get the idea. And let me tell you, from what we've given, this goes further beyond appearance. Seth is pretty inhuman in both behavior and morals. Or lack thereof. You know how I said in the intro Toffee's action set up everything for Season 3? And the major event of Season 2 was of Toffee's own accord, guiding Ludo through his plan by masquerading as the other half of Star's wand. Well, from what we know, it looks like Seth was the one who kicks out all of Toffee's actions. The true mastermind of it all. Again, the information we have at our disposal is sparse, but enough to connect some dots and realize, oh my god, this will be Season 4's villain. This being is what the show has been moving up to since day one. First off, Seth is ancient. He's the oldest Septarian. And you know how humans are pretty prejudiced towards monsters? Well, Seth's prejudice towards humans makes that look like nothing. In fact, I think Seth has a lot of parallels to Eclipse's own mother, Solaria the Monster Carver, the queen who wanted to commit mass genocide against all monsters. Seth wants to commit mass genocide against all of the humans. Glabglor and Eclipse are described to him as an extremist, and like much of the other Septarians, as we saw with Toffee, he can hold a grudge for hundreds of years. Moon's mother, Comet, described him as an old and decaying monster, with decaying and rotten hatred, and even more so, rotten ideas. Yet, this isn't any problem. His morals, his corrupted beliefs, they're toxic, but for one reason or another, I'm thinking it's because of the way he presents himself and his ideas, but we're still not sure, he attracts the generations of Satarians to come after him. As you could imagine, Seth was seen as problematic by the other monsters, at least those who are working towards peace. They were absolutely terrified of him. And despite Glavgor's title, Prince of Darkness, he even saw Seth as troublesome and despicable. Now we all know Toffee's pretty awful for killing Comet Butterfly. But what was Toffee's motivation? What led him to commit such an act? Well, um, it's, it was probably Seth. 
Comet Butterfly was the queen closest to uniting the monsters and humans together. However, a rebel faction of monsters, the remnants of we saw in the episode Moon the Undaunted, was led by Seth himself. And when I say Comet came close to uniting the humans and monsters together, I mean close. The peace treaty was written up, and Kama even extended her hand to Seth peacefully, inviting him to a celebration banquet. And you know, even if Seth wasn't down for it, he could've just said, no thank you. But he took it a step further, not only rejecting the offer, but informing Kama that he wanted her dead. And he got his wish. Because moments before the treaty was signed, Comet Butterfly was murdered by Toffee. Now again, I'm just putting two and two together here, but if I had to spitball, I would have to say that, uh, Seth orchestrated Toffee to kill Comet Butterfly. And after Comet was murdered, Seth decided to go missing? Yeah, he's not mentioned after this. I told you, we have very sparse information on this man. But considering we got confirmation in the book that Toffee was a prince, is it too far to say that Seth is also royalty? Perhaps even a king? Maybe it's a self-proclaimed title, like he calls himself the king king of chaos or something. The true king of monsters, anything really. Now while he could be Toffee's father, one, if there's a resemblance, it's very thin. But two, let's account for the fact we know his ideals can attract younger Septarians. If I had to go out on a limb here, my wild prediction is that Seth either kidnapped Toffee or took him in. Seth could be more of a father figure to Toffee than an actual biological father. But also keep this in mind. If Toffee was following Seth's footsteps, just going off Toffee, Seth has to be very well-mannered, very strategic, very intelligent, and has a very dangerous wild side. I mean, we've seen Toffee snap. He's calm, cool, and collected, but as soon as it's time to throw down, he throws down. So I can only imagine how terrifyingly strong Seth is. I do find it odd that Moon just never pursued Toffee, or apparently Seth, after she defeated Toffee by severing his finger. Like, uh, yeah, he's still out there, and you definitely face the consequences for that in season three, but you're just not gonna press where the rest of the monster faction is? I have no doubt in my mind Seth is gonna be in season four, but we have to consider that now. Now is the perfect time for him to rise up. Moon is missing. Glavgor is so crystallized, and for one reason or another, Eclipsa is not releasing him from his crystal, although it's very likely that she does not know the spell to liberate him from this prison. After all, it's been established that Romulus's crystals are terrifyingly strong. The only person we've seen break out of it on screen is Glosseric, although there is a spell in the book to pulverize such crystals. Eclipsa has the throne, but she is not in a good mental state to take care of the kingdom. And as we've seen from previews, the kingdom absolutely detests Eclipsa. They are not happy with her being in charge at all. With so much disorderliness and chaos, even after Moon is found, I do not see the main cast getting her life together fast enough to properly prepare against another strike from Seth. Toffee's plans may not have even been his own. Gaining Ludo's trust, becoming his right-hand man, then turning the tables on him, obtaining the wand for himself, corrupting magic, it could have all been a part of Seth's instruction. After all, Comet's murder was likely ordered from him. Seth may be aware that Toffee has failed, maybe he plans to resurrect him, or maybe he thinks he doesn't deserve to live another day. But one thing's for sure, season four is gonna get a little weird and a little wild. But as always, we wanna hear your thoughts. How do you feel about Seth of Tarsus? Where do you think his current wear Whereabouts are. Will we see him face off against Star or Moon? What about Eclipsa, Globgor? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or at Tune to me at Austrian Thoughts, or at Rontable Vids. We're also on Instagram. If you want to help the Rontable grow, you can either become a member of the channel or support us on Patreon. Get access to exclusive perks. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please sure to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop with all things Star. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Austrian Thoughts out. Hi, I'm Ushrik Vox from the Roundtable. Hi guys, I'm Richard Nemo. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, and it's going to be that time of year where everyone wants to spread their Christmas cheer. The holiday season is the most wonderful time of the year. You all heard the song. But unfortunately, not everyone out there can afford to have a great Christmas, especially children out there. And here at the Roundtable, we want to help. And for that reason, Roundtable is launching Tune Up for Santa. A 12-hour charity livestream event. This Saturday, December 15th, starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're raising money for the Toys for Tots charity, which helps give every kid a great Christmas. We're gonna stream video games, have weird challenges, the whole nine. And you're all invited. And we want to reach out to all the content creators, all the streamers, YouTubers, artists in the cartoon community to, to get involved and help raise money for this cause. 
singing, dancing, maybe wrestling. We'll be taking requests from the stream. We'll have music. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff, so please stop by. Donate if you can, but more than anything, we just want to have fun, and we want to raise awareness for this cause. Now, to make sure we can actually donate the money to Toys for Tots as soon as we can, money would have to be donated via Streamlabs, so like Twitch. Super Chats will be disabled. No, don't get me wrong, you don't have to donate, but you can just come and watch and enjoy the fun with us. Hope to see you all there. Starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come tune up with Santa with us, and Merry Christmas. I hope that we get to see all of you there.